morning everybody this is Margaret thanks for stopping by my channel you're on booktube I am finally ready believe it or not to do the mid-year book freakout tag and I will put the information down below as to who started it because everyone is doing it but no one's getting tagged because it's just a mid-year thing to do so last year I didn't really get it and this year I'm jumping on the bandwagon so should be fun okay Question number one, the best book you've read in 2020. I'm going to give this a tie with two, The Luminaries, because it just left me with this feeling of like glowing admiration for all the things that were working and how the author had done it and how meticulous it had been done. It's like looking at a cathedral, just like best, right? It's by Eleanor Catton. And also, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I read this for March of the Moderns, the readathon that I started last March. And I'd never read Zora Neale Hurston before, and I found out what I was missing, which was a lot. Her prose is beautiful. Her character arcs are beautiful. Um, the milieu that you're slipped into is fascinating and rich and diverse and... It's just lovely. So pays off. So definitely read that one. Question number two, best sequel. And here I have a, an easy answer. I haven't read a single sequel this year. So I said that on Sunday when I was preparing for this, I found out that was true. And I thought, oh, how weird. But yeah, apparently we ain't got no time for sequels because we take a taste and we're like, eh, pretty good. Let's move on and try something new. It's the, it's the FOMO, as I was telling Danny. Question number three. New release, I want to read. And so right here, I'm going to give two plugs for Piper Hughley's Sweet Tea, which is a romance, and Kaya Alderson's Sisters in Arms, which is historical fiction. And they're both written by black women, about black women. So these are on my list as upcoming releases. Question number four, most anticipated release of 2021. And here, I'm going to put in a shameless plug for my friend's book. So Jenna Blum is already gone promotion mode for Woodrow on the Bench. And if you are someone who likes dogs or great stories of communities coming together and people like expanding the boundaries of their lives, then this is definitely for you because this is her old black lab Woodrow and it was about the last six months of his life when she had to carry him out to his walk so that he could sit on the bench with her for a little while and be outside because he was so um, old and sick and she just had this love for him that um, made other people attracted and sort of brought out the love in her community in Boston in her neighborhood and so it's gonna be a tearjerker for sure and a dog does die but it's a beautiful processing of a grief and community and love and what makes life um, so fantastic so I am excited for Jenna to you know, make people cry all across the country. <laughs> so there we go. Question number five, biggest disappointment. Okay, well, I'm going to have to go with Native Tongue, Native Tongue by Suzanne Elgin. Um, it was a sci-fi, but it was much older than I thought it was. It was like classic era, and I thought it was going to be like this feminist take on language, and the story was really top heavy and plot scarce and anyway it was not as good as I thought it would be it was okay but as I as I pointed out to pay the afterward and the author's note was a lot more interesting to me in the linguistic side than the actual story um, other disappointments would be the woodlanders by Thomas Hardy because um, the prose was pretty characters are interesting but the plot was not for me the um, it was way too, let's see, not cliche, not gothic, but like, um, like a melodrama, like a melodrama, like with someone on the tracks and like the, the Edward Carey, uh, noise at the beginning of that masterpiece theater, Woo! like, like that. So no, also I have to say food of a younger land because Mark Kolansky edited this collection of other people's notes from a hundred years ago. And I thought it'd be great, but he starts out strong and then just sort of lets it peter out. And I was like, but dude, you petered out in the West in my country. I wanted to see those. Meh. Okay, but we can turn this around because question six is the biggest surprise. 
and Mark Kerlansky, COD, little little book, but I really enjoyed it. It was all these facts about COD and the history of humans interacting with COD, and all these like historical things like empires and emigration and economies. That's a lot of ease. Uh, yes, so I found that fascinating, so good for Mark Kolansky on that one. Also, How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams, and that was great. I got that as a Libro.fm, the best audiobook purveyor in the world, and it was great. It was a romance, it was funny, it was like a heart string puller, um, but it was also very up-to-date, very keen on contemporary details and the humor was like spot on. So I just really appreciated it. I was listening to it and I loved it. Question number seven, a uh, new author, either a debut or a new to me author. So for this one, I had to go with three different ones because I've been experimenting a lot because of being on booktube and seeing all your great recommendations. So I'll start with Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang, which I buddy read with uh, Kim at Bookmarks and Breadsticks because it was sort of food related <laughs> because the sour heart is uh, one of the short stories that links with the rest and it's about someone who really likes the sour taste when they're growing up and there's a whole thematic link in it as well but it was really fascinating it was a lot of interlinked stories about um, mainly New York City and Chinese American experience both in China and in New York City and growing up and a family dynamics and neighborhoods and just like really really cool details there were a lots of there were a lot of things from childhood that um, I I didn't have the experience of and so it was really like letting being led into someone's front room okay so Jenny Zhang uh, I'm gonna say wild woman in the blues by Jenny s Bryce which is a awesome book I listened to this on Libro FM as well, the most fabulous audiobook purveyor in the world, and it was great details. It's a historical fiction novel set in the 20s in Chicago, as well as contemporary times in Chicago, and sort of like uses the dual timeline to strengthen the, the tension and the surprises, and she did a wonderful job researching. I was like so swept away by the... Um, the Jazz Age in, in Chicago, which is great. And for the third debut and new-to-me author, I'm going to say Wabgishig Rice, The Moon of the Crusted Snow, which was thrilling. It's a dystopian thriller set in um, Upper Canada on a reservation land when something happens to the world and um, this tribal lands community has to uh, negotiate how they deal with... Um, things as they change, which is all I will say. Okay, question eight. New fictional crush. So for these, I'm going to reach back again to March of the Moderns, to Precious Bane, which I buddy read with Marissa at Blatantly Bookish, and we both love the book, and I'm going to say Kester because he just has this, like, warm presence that is like, everything's going to be okay. Yes, he rescues the person. So, I mean, it's, it's an old book. Um, it's, there's not much f female agency, I guess, in that dynamic, but, um, the female character sees in him things about herself that she like realizes. So I thought that was okay. Um, but yeah, so he's just a wonderful warm presence. I'm also going to put in here, um, Iona Wishaw's book series, uh, with Lane Winslow as the detective, sort of amateur detective, former spy. Um, she has a character called Inspector Darling, and uh, I've only read the first book, as indicated by the no sequels comment, but he feels like one of those characters that, um, not Inspector Clouseau, who am I thinking of? Like, very dry humor, very reserved, very like stand back and look at you like are you sure you want to do that kind of energy but then you kind of see that he has a cinnamon roll side when he gets protected protective and I just think it's going to develop in a very good way so I hope I don't get disappointed in the second half of the year with that so there's the crushes question number nine new favorite character I've got two here and they also come from March of the Moderns so I'm going to say from High Wages which I buddy read with Katya Weinert Jane 
the shop girl who doesn't take no crap, <laughs> who does not give an inch on what she wants and what she goes for, and all the people she interacts with and how she learns and how she like fights for her independence. So I loved Jane. And in a similar vein, Enchanted April's uh, Lottie Wilkins. So I had to look up the character name because there's a bunch of women and I've already forgotten all their names. But Lottie is the one we're introduced to first, and she has the most dramatic transformation and we're in her head a lot during this um narrative so she starts out as this nervous housewife who can't please her husband and is just like just really pitiful and then she imagines what would be great and she gets there with other people's help and really just gains confidence and and blooms so i i loved seeing lottie uh, lottie's mannerisms and how she changes it was great question 10 we've got a book that made me cry and, uh, I mean, it's not that they were sob stories, but because, um, whatever moment I was in was so intense that I, I did shed a couple tears. Reading Austin Land after seeing the movie, I read this with Berna of Berna's Bookish Adventures. We both liked it. I loved it. <laughs> um, but also, and that's by Shannon Hale, but also, uh, Lean Out by Tara Henley. And this is a nonfiction uh, it's kind of a memoir slash cultural commentary. She's talking about, obviously, it's a reaction against Lean In, but Lean Out is also addressing more social trends in work, in um, where you live, in how we buy houses, in what we get paid, in how we treat people, and yeah, all of these different things sort of wrapped around... Um, her own decisions to be in Toronto, doing a career, then sort of hit bottom, uh, get sick, go home, live in BC, um, sort of revisit things that she thought she knew about her home, and then now she's back in Toronto, like, publishing and stuff. So, yeah, that was a really great journey. Um, I read it at the very beginning of the year, and I remember walking and listening to it, because I had it on Libro FM, the greatest audiobook purveyor in the world, and I had walked up a hill and down and sort of came to a spot where I could see Portland to the north, to the river. And it was just so beautiful. And she was describing something about, like, looking out on her own city and reflecting. And it was just, like, one of those, like, <sighs> like, just everything sort of crushes on your brain at the same time. And you're like, wow. So that's what made me cry. Question number 11. Question 11. I don't know. Question 11 is a book that made you happy, and I'm going to say Austin Land for this too because it's one of my favorite comfort movies, and watching and reading the book was um, such a treasured experience. But I will also add the one I just finished this morning, which is Minimum Wage Magic, and I have not talked about that one on this channel yet, so stay tuned for the next uh, week or so, and I'm going to be talking about it with John from Hey Y'all Listen Up, because this is the first one we decided to uh, buddy read together, and it's super cute, so can't wait to talk about it with you. Question 12, most beautiful book and this was easy, Priory of the Orange Tree, if it's going for physical looks, obviously. Um, the cover for Priory of the Orange Tree, I'll display here. No other words needed. Question 13, books you have to read by the end of the year. These I actually picked up a couple because I have them here. Okay, so the personal librarian. Um, I have oh, wanted this book for so long because I've been hearing all the people who have read it early rave about it, including Mary oh, Mary Weber O'Malley, who's been on this channel before, so I need to read this pronto. It's going to be like next, um, especially because I'm going to be producing the A Mighty Blaze interview with Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray, which is the co-writing team of the novel, and um, Marie Benedict had uh, the urge to ask Victoria Christopher Murray to co-author this book with her because Victoria Christopher Murray, Victoria Christopher Murray is an African American writer, and it's uh, it's a story that hinges on a person who is passing as white, who is the librarian at J.P. Morgan's library in New York City at the turn of the century. So there's lots of good stuff to dive into, and it looks and it sounds amazing. So I can't wait. That'll be, in case you're interested, 
um, July 21st, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's a special event on Wednesday, July 21st, so I hope you sign up and watch with me on YouTube. That'd be super fun. Second book that I have to read by the end of the year is going to be Robin Wall Kimmerer because I've heard such great things about her um, sweet, sweet braid, braiding sweet grass. There we go. Braiding sweet grass. And this is her earlier book and it's about moss. So not only is it shorter than the other one and in paperback, so it's less expensive, um, it's about moss and I love moss. So I brought this down to keep me company because there's no moss in California. It's too hot and dry. Um... So hopefully I'll crack this before I head back to Oregon as well. And then the final one I want to read before the end of the year is A Lady's Revenge by EDK. This is an ebook that I got from Smashwords. In case you don't know about Smashwords, comment me and I'll explain what it is. But this is a fellow author who is in Yellow Book of Fluid PDX and she does amazing research on lady boxers from the Regency age. Her covers are amazing and she's great in events and I just got the book and then, you know, sort of whirlwinded through and haven't read it yet. Ebooks aren't my favorite, but I, I need to make an exception and read this one because her sequel is definitely already out and maybe I'll get to that in the second half of the year too. So, um, lady boxers in the Regency, I mean, how do you not need that? So there we go. That is my super quick mid-year book freak out tag. I'm not going to tag anyone if you haven't done it yet. Uh, please do because then you'll be later than me and make me feel better. All right, that's going to be it. I have to go look at another leaky sink today, Monday, and um, I'll put this up tomorrow after I've <clears throat> edited it. So thanks for stopping by, everybody. Don't forget to taste life twice, even if it's candy corn, and I will talk to you again soon. Off, off, off. Thank you. Because I'm going to be interviewing, well, I'm going to be producing an interview with Mary interviewing 